I'm Roz Rothstein with Stand With Us, and you're watching Taped with Rabbi Doug. We're gonna see Rabbi Doug. We're gonna see Rabbi Doug. We're gonna see Rabbi Doug on your TV tonight. But Daddy, I wanna watch Monday Night Football. Forget about Monday Night Football. There's no other thing we're gonna watch on Monday but Rabbi Doug. Yeah, Rabbi Doug on TV tonight. We're going to see Rabbi Doug. Oh, how many money talk about that? Shalom and welcome to Taped with Rabbi Doug. We're here in Los Angeles, California at Sinai Temple for the uh, Rabbis United Conference of Stand With Us. And I am here with Roz Rothstein. She is the CEO and co-founder of Stand With Us. And uh, it's just my honor to have her on the show. Uh, we've done a couple of minutes with her in the past at the APAC conference in Washington, D.C., as well as others from Stand With Us. But uh, this time we are featuring Stand With Us for this episode of Taped with Rabbi Doug. And I'm here in Los Angeles, California with Roz. And Roz, welcome to the show, first of all. Thank you for it, having me. It's, it's really a pleasure. Um, I want to talk a little bit about, for our viewers who, who might not know Stand With Us, we're seen all over the world besides on television in Chicago. And I think that it's an important thing for those who really don't know what Stand With Us is and why it's such an important organization that we talk about it today. Now, for those who are a little bit familiar, Stand With Us is an organization supporting Israel. But what does that mean? It has some specific things that other organizations do not go into depth working towards. And the I would say the number one thing in my mind when I think of Stand With Us is uh, to try and fight anti-Semitism. And that's really a, a, a big thing. And the second thing I think Stand With Us really uh, it makes it special is they support students who experience anti-Semitism and teach them how to fight anti-Semitism and be proud of Israel and their Judaism. And I really think that kind of encompasses just in my mind what Stand With Us stands for. But I want, I want you to tell me, how did Stand With Us start? How did you come about of starting an organization like this? And uh, what, did, what did it grow from to what it's grown into today? So 21 years ago, we began this organization because we were at the um, kind of the beginning of the second intifada and there was a lot of violence going on in israel there were sniper attacks and there were bus bombings uh, and uh, we we didn't really get a sense that people understood what was going on there the the full story of the terrorism and uh it was a shame when when something bad would happen not only would something bad happen, but the way that it was translated in the media uh, was almost as though it was Israel's fault for citizens getting murdered. So. so just going backwards, there's an organization called Honest Reporting that whenever they see something which is falsely reported in the news uh, about Israel, they try and uh, straighten it out in, in, in a public way. Um, Stand With Us tries to take those things and teach people what's really right. Isn't that correct? It is correct. It is correct. There's Honest Reporting. We love them. They're a great group and Camera. Mm -hmm. um, camera also, absolutely. And, uh, you know, they, they do great work. However, you can't do all that work. And still, uh, the, the media gets it wrong over and over. And, and the unfortunate thing is people who don't know anything they read these things and they just don't know, they can't fill in the blanks by themselves. There's such a lack of information that when the media is leaving out a half a story, people just don't know. There's no way for them to know if, they, if they're if they uneducated. So you and your your your, your friends who, who, who were really troubled by this, what did you come together and say, we have to we have to spread the word we have to do something how did that come about and, and what was the first thing you did to to get things started so so first i must say that before we came together uh i i was a family therapist i had my own private practice for 20 years uh, my husband was in advertising and um, he he had been in advertising for 30 years 
So both of us were, were very busy with our careers, and yet we, we thought that there would be organizations that would come forward and come up with a strategy to explain what was going on to the public. We thought that, you know, maybe the, the larger organizations would be coming up with a strategy uh, to explain it. So, so in, in March of 2021, there was a murder of a baby in Hebron. Her name was Shalhevet Pass. Oh, I remember it vividly. We all know about Shalhevet. Shalhevet was uh, murdered with a bullet in her forehead. And um, this was March of, 20, of, of 2001. And we realized when that happened that really no organization is organizing or coming up with a strategy because there was such silence from the Jewish community about it. It's not that they didn't see it as a tragedy. Everybody saw it as a tragedy, but they weren't talking about what was going on and the hostility and the terrorism and, you know, unfortunately teaching Palestinian children uh, to grow up indoctrinated to, to hate Jews, to become martyrs, you know, it, it was just so much information was missing from the story that you read. And then two months later, in May, early May, from May 7th, May 8th, two boys in the hills of Tekoa, Kobe Mandel and Yosef Ishran. Kobe's mother was just on our show just a few weeks ago. They, um, they played hooky, they didn't go to school, and they were caught by Palestinian teenagers, and they were murdered beyond recognition, tortured, and, and so. Terrible. It was that night that uh, my husband and I uh, watched the coverage of the two boys' murder that we realized that nobody, really nobody is coming. That's it, it's clear, nothing is changing, nobody is coming. And so, it was two weeks later, so this was May 8th, uh, two weeks later, May 21st, we uh, called an emergency meeting at our home, <clears throat> we served dinner, and the people you contacted were your friends in the Jewish community? They were the leaders of the different organizations we had. Mm -hmm. uh, we had uh, somebody from ADL, we had somebody from the Federation, from Simon Wiesenthal, <coughs> from, <coughs> sorry, from the Bureau of Jewish Education, we mm -hmm. had the Board of Rabbis, we had rabbis from every denomination, uh, and uh, we, we brought everybody together, ate dinner together, and then discussed the issue. There were about 50 people at our home. Uh, lay leaders attended also. People knew us because I had been involved on boards in Los Angeles. And, and the answer to the question is there, there was nobody at fault, there was nobody to blame. It was that every organization, if they're any good, they stick to their mission. They have their agenda. They have their stuff that they do and they, that's what their budget covers. And that's what they do. If they teach Holocaust and that's what they do, that's what they do. If they feed the hungry, if they fight cancer, it, it, they grow if they stay on mission. And we realized that, you know, they weren't about to open up a new division. They didn't have the budget and they didn't have the wherewithal to do another agenda. So it was a vacuum. It was clear that night that, that you, you, you learned the meaning of um, mission statement and if an organization is any good, they stay to their mission statement. And that mission was not being fulfilled. So it, it landed, it landed in our home. And um, Jerry Rothstein, my husband, and uh, Esther Renzer, community activist, and, and I, all three of us together, we knew we were gonna do something, but we didn't really know what exactly we would do. We were gonna start as volunteers, which we did. And uh, for that next year, I still worked as a family therapist. Uh, Jerry still worked for seven years as a volunteer in advertising uh, as his career, but volunteered his time with Stan with us. And, um, and Esther has remained a volunteer for 21 years. She serves as the president. Uh, Jerry is now the COO and I'm the CEO. So. We have built an organization in 21 years that now works on six continents. 
Uh, we have 170 employees. Wow. We have a multi-million dollar budget and uh, we host conferences. We fly students in from all over the world to, to train them to be able to have conversations that are rich, that educate their friends, that inspire their peers. My oldest daughter, by the way, was a fellow at the University of Illinois when oh. she was uh, there in college. And, nice. Uh, yeah, nice. absolutely. And, uh, you know, the, the purpose is to, uh, to educate people so that they can go forward and go viral. So through their efforts, we're able, like for example, just with the campus community, we're able to reach 150,000 students every single year through the students that we have worked with. On the high school, it's the same thing. Through the 150 uh, Kenneth Leventhal interns that we work with for the year, they will inspire and reach another 150,000 students in their youth groups and their schools and their communities. So it really does, each kid gets trained and, and goes viral with their circle. And then there's social media. Uh, we, we have become proficient at uh, social media education and uh, Stand With Us is on Twitter and has high numbers and, and Facebook with million, you know, millions. Of, we are reaching millions of people every single week through Instagram, Facebook, um, Twitter, Pinterest, wh whichever you know, medium that we use, whichever platform, uh, we have been very successful. Wow, it's, it's amazing. Tell me, tell me a little bit about um, campus life because um, I don't know if our, our viewers don't know yet because you haven't said it, but you have a legal department too. And uh, you presented that to the rabbis at the conference today, which is uh, just, Yael, she's just tremendous in her, in her sharing her words about, uh, you know, about the legal department and the things that they have been involved with. Um, Anti-Semitism on campus and, and what things are, are against the law and what things are free speech. Right. And, and those, those borderline things that come along. Um, how many times do you think um, that Stand With Us has intervened on behalf of a university, on behalf of a Jewish organization, on behalf of a Jewish individual on campus with success against those who have been bullying them with anti-Semitism and threats and so on and so forth? So uh, since our inception of the legal department, uh, we've had over 2,000 requests for help. Wow. Uh, and uh, it's a high number, but we have grown tremendously. We, ha we now have 250 pro bono attorneys uh, working across the United States, waiting for an assignment and hoping to help. Um, there's no shortage of people who feel that this is a tremendous, um, important thing to their hearts and they, they can't take it that these kids are being bullied for being Jewish or bullied for being pro-Israel. And they, um, we, just, we just filed a Title VI uh, complaint at the University of George Washington University. Because That's in St. Louis? And no, George Washington is in uh, D.C. George Washington, D.C. There's Washington and St. Louis. Wash, Wash U, I guess. Right, uh, right. Right. So this is in, uh, in Washington, D.C., a very famous university and large. George Washington University. Yeah. And, and uh, there's a professor there who, uh, okay, she has her own very negative opinions about Israel. Uh, she's very open about it. She, she took down her Twitter, by the way, since the complaint was uh, lodged. But she um, took her her own uh, political viewpoints out on those students in a very discriminatory way. And so uh, the students were basically bullied by the professor because they were Jewish and or uh, Israeli. And so the students then went to the administration, told the administration about the, um, the incidents, uh, multiple incidents, mm -hmm. And the administration went back to the professor and the professor proceeded to retaliate against the students, uh, making wow. this a double, you know, she doubled down double and, um, mm -hmm. and the university didn't really help the students. So 
It's, it's cause for Title VI is the thing. So do these students come directly to you, directly to, to stand with us, yes. to the uh, uh, university representative from stand with us? How do they make that connection? Someone's watching right now and she says, this is going on in my life at my school right now. Who do I talk to? Who do they look for? So they can write to legal at standwithus.com. Uh, they can write to info at standwithus.com. Uh, there, are, there are campus managers across the country. They can write to campus at standwithus.com. Uh, we will take, take the report um, and, and we will uh, move, move it to you know, getting dealt with very quickly. Um, we will take it seriously. We will not let it sit on someone's desk for a while. It will be dealt with. Uh, you'll, you'll get a pretty fast response. So let me go back to my daughter at the University of Illinois because this happened, and I remember it so vividly, um, student government BDS, the big, the big vote that looked like it was going to pass, that they were going to uh, 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 accept BDS and, and, and no longer have anything to do with anything uh, with Israel uh, or Israel investments and so on and so forth and that was going to recommend, recommend to the university itself and uh, my daughter along with a number of people from Stand With Us, from APAC, from Students Supporting Israel and other organizations um, together, uh, big campaign, big campaign. BDS lost by 4,000 votes. It was oh, it was wow. an amazing thing. This was, of course, you I know, remember hearing about it, but I didn't realize it was 4,000 votes. 4,000 votes. She was the president at the time of Student Support Against Israel, Alina Student Support Against Israel, and uh, it was by 4,000 votes they beat it. But it's not happening like that everywhere. It does pass sometimes. No, it does, tell of me, course. tell me, does does your legal department get involved in these BDS? Uh, uh, um, uh, student government things? Do they do they come in and, and help or advise the students from the Jewish organizations and and with the stand up, stand with us uh, fellows on campus that are that are suffering through this ordeal? So the student will come to us. They'll either come to the campus staff or a combination of campus and legal. Uh, our organization is very collaborative, so we work not only internally but we also work with other organizations on the ground at the campus. And so, you know, we'll take the information. We hope the student has documented everything, uh, you know, made notes, videotaped, uh, ha has a record of what's going on. If it's clear cut legal, it'll go to the legal department. If it's not quite that, and it may just need an intervention of a letter, uh -huh. uh, it may, the, the university may receive a letter um, we, there are a whole myriad of ways that, you know, we deal with things, uh, but they assess it and then they, they uh, take it seriously. You shared with the rabbis today, uh, um, with the Rabbis United Conference, uh, a number of uh, sections of Stand With Us that are working with different age groups in schools. You talked about, about high school, you talked about college, you even talked about uh, at one point some elementary school stuff and, and education. How, how do these people get involved in, in public schools and public education and so forth? How, how do they get trained also? They have to be trained obviously. You don't just come in and say, hi, I was a fellow and now I'm an employee, but I don't know what to do. You know, how, do they, how do you train them and how do they get involved in, in, in local government and local school districts? Okay, so le let's take it apart for a minute. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have a middle school department, mm -hmm. a high school department, a college department, a community department. Um, and, uh, you know, we have to, again, we have to assess what the issues and what the needs are. Uh, if you're watching and you have a high school student that happens to be interested in leadership and uh, is interested in supporting Israel and fighting anti-Semitism, they should contact our high school department uh, because we may have an opportunity for them. And right now, as a matter of fact, applications are coming in, uh, you know, for the following year. Sure. So we, we're constantly either training students for the year or taking applications for the following year. And um, so we have this constant turnaround of young leaders who want to help lead on their campus to fight anti-Semitism and to educate their peers and inspire people about Israel. 
Same thing is true for college students. If, if you know of a great kid who wants to be a leader on campus and you know they should just contact us and we should talk with them because they may be able to make an impact with their friends and in their community on campus. So it's it's kind of it's kind of gotten serious. Uh, you know, it's not just uh, you could do this as a hobby. Uh, you know, it's kind of gotten serious. Like we need these kids. We need them to be vocal and present and mindful and knowledgeable to some degree at least to be able to have better conversations uh, because it's kind of an urgent matter. Anti-Semitism uh, is everywhere again. Anti-Semitism is, is rising. And, you know, David Suiza said tonight, you know, we David should- David Suiza, by the way, is the um, publisher and the chief editor of the Jewish Journal, which is the uh, uh, West Coast uh, Jewish newspaper. Right. And uh, a tremendous man, tremendous man. He's also been on our show briefly before in the past, and today he said to me, I'd love to be on your show for a regular show. So he's a, he, he's a terrific speaker. He's very talented. Yeah, very. And tonight he talked about, you know, yes, there's rising anti-Semitism. We have to be able to keep our sense of humor. We have to be able to show our pride and be ourselves and, um, and if you do that, that people will pick on you less. Maybe, maybe not. But look, I started saying this is a serious time. And honestly, um, you know, we, we, have to, we have to listen to the words of people who say they want to destroy us. And uh, we, have to, we have to listen and prepare ourselves for, you know, for better or for worse. We've got to be able to be prepared. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it's a matter of security, you know, securing the synagogue, securing an event like tonight, mm -hmm. you know, we have to, to have security. Um, you know, we, we can't be lax with it. We shouldn't overreact with it, but we should deal with it. We should assume that if somebody says bad things, they want to do bad things. We've got we've to take them seriously and we have to prepare ourselves. We talked about K through 12 yeah. and you asked me, so let me just please say a word about K through 12. So the K through, K through 12 public school curriculum is at risk uh, because there are people who want to seize the moment and insert bad things about Jewish people or bad things about the state of Israel or leave out the story of the Jewish people. And it's going to be our job to be fully aware that this is going on and uh, we're scaling at Stand With Us to be able to deal with this. Thank God uh, we have donors who understand the threats and are supporting us hiring more people to be able to push back on this threat in a very strategic way. You, you heard today we're being extremely strategic with this. And, um, you know, it, it's good for people to understand the threats so that we don't take things for granted and we prepare ourselves and deal with it. And, and knowing that this is a problem is half the battle. Knowing that this is, you know, you could not know and all of a sudden there's new curriculum across the country, you know, and it's all like anti-Israel and it leaves out the Jewish story and it's supposed to be about minorities. Well, we're certainly a, min a minority. We're certainly a minority with a story. Sure. Wow, 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 wow. Uh, one of the things that impressed me today um, is I met a lot of your West Coast staff from Stand With Us, and all of them told me about how they started out as fellows on campus, that they started out volunteering and studying and learning about uh, an organization to support Israel. And here it was, Stand With Us came about and they got involved in Stand With Us. And now they're working for Stand With Us. A few of them came to me and said, oh, is, is, the, is Ilana your daughter? I know your daughter because she's an Israel activist for so many years. So uh, it just, it, it's a wonderful thing that people stay internal. They get turned on by Stand With Us and they say, you know, I wanna work for this organization because I believe in it. I believe in it. And the pride that they feel 
about, about their Judaism and about supporting Israel just emanates around them and their enthusiasm for what they do. You brought in one of your uh, uh, f former fellows who's now working for you. Uh, I think she told me she was at UCLA, I'm pretty sure, from Israel. And she said she spends six months a year in the United States going around teaching and speaking about Stand With Us and, and the need for it and, and, and six months working on it in Israel while she lives there. It's, it's an amazing thing how you spread your network all over. And how many countries did you say you're in? We're in six continents. Six continents right now. Six continents starting out from a small group in an emergency meeting with about 50 people in Los Angeles. That's right. What, what, an, what an amazing thing. What, what is, what's in the future? What, <laughs> what, what do you want to do? Um, obviously, you want to be more successful in, in your goals. You want, yeah. you want anti-Semitism to be fought with more uh, fervor. And you want people to know that they can count on Stand With Us if they contact you because that's what you're here for. But, but what do you want Stand With Us to do in the future and growing? And, and what do you think their uh, uh, near future, well, let's not talk about 20 years from now, but let's say in the next five years, what, what, what are your goals to try and, and change or make better for Stand With Us? Because so, it's such a great organization. Thank you, thank you so much. So uh, we are growing steadily. Uh, we're conservative in some ways, uh, just to make sure that we do things um, in a manner that uh, takes into concept uh, evaluations from students, from teachers, from community members. We want to evaluate. Tonight we evaluated our rabbi's conference. Every single person filled out an evaluation form. We want to make sure we're growing correctly and we're taking into account uh, the, the feedback from the recipient. So where will we go within the next five years? We're watching our metrics. We watch our successes. We watch our numbers. For the things that are successful, we continue to invest in those things. If they're not successful, we might move them aside and rethink it. Uh, we, we have booklets, for example, booklets that, you know, we've given out millions of booklets in different languages. For the ones that sit on the shelves and don't get used, we're not going to reprint them. In the concept, you, you know, for the things that move on social media, then we learn from what moves on social media. For the ways that we teach students and we see that they thrive and they feel so great about themselves and they're educating their friends, for the things that are successful, then we continue to reinvest. So we have 13 departments now, including Holocaust education, including middle school, high school, campus, social media, legal, all the things that we do, each one is growing steadily and is very successful. We'll continue to invest in those very successful metrics. Very nice. Well, I can't thank you enough for being on the show and sharing all about stand with us with our audience i want to thank you for being with us remember you can check out our website www.tvrabbi.com where you can also see former shows on the web of course watch us on tv every week as well and uh if you May want I to give them ours yeah too? i was just going to say one way you can contact Roz and stand with us is it is a 501c3 non-for-profit organization uh, they are available and uh, to you you can send us an email info at tvrabbit.com I will forward it to her or what's a, a direct email address to send so check out the website okay. standwithus.com standwithus.com and enough. you can write to us at info at standwithus.com great all right thanks for being with us and thank you so much thank you Hatzlacha, much more success and hope to see you next time right here on Take with Rabbi Doug. Shalom, everyone. Gonna see Rabbi Doug. Gonna see Rabbi Doug on the TV tonight. This has been a Taped with Rabbi Doug production.